Saudi Arabia is renowned as the largest desert with an arid climate, experiencing extreme weather shifts and minimal rainfall. How has the nation managed to thrive despite these limitations? Today, we reveal a remarkable phenomenon that will astonish you, unlike anything you've ever seen. Saudi Arabia's agricultural advancements have left the world in awe, drawing the attention of scientists worldwide. Stay with us to uncover the full story. Join us on this cosmic journey Saudi Arabia just shocked American scientists with this. When examining Saudi Arabia's history, you'll find it's a Western Asian nation formerly called the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It is the second largest Arab country in Western Asia and the Middle East, covering most of the Arabian Peninsula with an area of approximately 2,150,000 square kilometers. It's also the fifth largest country in Asia. Despite its prominence, Saudi Arabia has long struggled with desertification. The country's terrain is varied, including forests, grasslands, mountains and deserts, showcasing diverse topography and regional temperature differences. In summer, desert temperatures can surpass 110 degrees, while in the north and central regions, winter temperatures may fall below freezing. Recently, however, Saudi Arabia has achieved an incredible transformation, utilizing advanced technology to turn large desert areas into green farmland. With an annual average rainfall of just 4 inches, Saudi Arabia is one of the most water-scarce countries globally. While 97% of its population has access to drinkable water, the annual per capita water production is only 89.5 cubic meters, significantly below the severe water shortage threshold of 500 cubic meters. Despite the high water access rate, Excessive consumption and limited renewable water sources have made water scarcity a critical concern. Though oil is often considered Saudi Arabia's most valuable resource, water has grown increasingly precious due to its scarcity. The main water sources are the sea and groundwater, both of which are depleting. Globally, 98% of natural freshwater is stored in groundwater, and in Saudi Arabia, these sources provide 50% of the water consumed. Over the past three decades, agricultural development in Saudi Arabia has been extraordinary, especially for a nation with one of the world's lowest rainfall averages. Large desert regions have been transformed into agricultural fields, and today, Saudi Arabia exports products worldwide including wheat, dates, dairy, eggs, fish, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Dates, once a staple, are now mainly grown for international humanitarian aid. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Agriculture primarily oversees agricultural policy, with other government bodies like the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization responsible for buying, storing, and producing fee, while the Saudi Agricultural Bank SIB provides subsidies and interest-free loans. Government-funded projects also support land distribution and reclamation programs. The private sector has significantly contributed to agriculture, with government support offering long-term, interest-free loans, technical assistance and incentives like free fertilizers and seeds, affordable water, fuel, electricity, and duty-free imports of equipment and raw materials. Historically, Arabian Peninsula agriculture was limited to date farming and small-scale vegetable cultivation in oases. Local communities grew food on small plots, with any surplus sold to traveling caravans. Substantial agricultural expansion began in the 1970s, backed by government efforts to develop rural infrastructure, 
including roads, irrigation, storage, and export facilities. This led to a rise in staple food production, and today, Saudi Arabia is self-sufficient in meat, milk and eggs. Saudi Arabian agriculture relies heavily on water, and the government has established a multi-layered water management program to support growth. A network of dams was built to capture seasonal floods, and deep wells were drilled into underground reservoirs. Desalination plants were constructed to supply fresh water to urban areas, freeing other water sources for agriculture. Infrastructure was also built to reuse industrial and urban runoff for irrigation. These initiatives have turned vast desert regions into productive farmland. In 1976, Saudi Arabia had less than 400,000 acres of farmland which has since grown to millions of acres. Remarkably, Saudi Arabia is home to various indigenous plant species adapted to its harsh climate. The Saudi Green Initiative SGI is now dedicated to preserving and expanding vegetation from the northern deserts to the southern Asir region, which hosts over 2,000 wild plant species in 142 families. However, 600 species are endangered, and 21 are thought to be extinct. The SGI has launched the country's largest reforestation project, aiming to plant 450 million trees in the coming years, with about 10 million trees already planted across Saudi Arabia's 13 regions. Forests might not be the first image that comes to mind when thinking of Saudi Arabia, but the kingdom is home to 2.7 million hectares of woodland, mainly in the southwest's mountainous areas of Abha and Asir. Planting 450 million trees may seem ambitious, particularly in desert areas, but the Saudi government has outlined specific SGI objectives to integrate green spaces within urban areas, balancing development with greenery to reduce urban sprawl effects. These initiatives will help slow global warming, lower carbon emissions, improve air quality, promote active lifestyles, and enhance urban landscapes. In rural areas, however, greening faces challenges from desertification, limited water and high temperatures, all aggravated by human-caused climate change. The SGI roadmap prioritizes protecting biodiversity, halting desertification, preventing soil erosion, and conserving water resources in areas with low rainfall and depleted groundwater. Currently, 15 regions in Saudi Arabia are protected for biodiversity, with plans to increase this to 75, covering land and marine areas. Approximately 6% of Saudi Arabia's land is protected by the King Salman World Nature Reserve, home to around 300 animal species and significant archaeological sites dating back to 800 BC. Recently, volunteers partnered with the reserve's administration to plant 100,000 seedlings, supporting SGI's goals. In northern Saudi Arabia, the King Salman Nature Reserve has planted 600,000 plants and conducted seed sowing campaigns to expand vegetation. The ecosystem restoration involves planting native trees and shrubs adapted to the desert's drought and high temperatures. Access to water remains a significant challenge, and Saudi Arabia has long used freshwater wells to support communities. After the economic boom of the 1970s, groundwater resources were gradually depleted, leading to seawater desalination on both coasts. Despite limited rainfall, the Saudi government is seeking ways to better manage water for both economic growth and environmental sustainability. The King Abdullah University of Science and Technology Center for Desert Agriculture is instrumental in SGI's water strategy. 
Advisor Maria Nava informed Arab News that the SGI will likely use treated wastewater for irrigation and prevent rainfall from flowing to the sea by employing sand infiltration and advanced water harvesting techniques. She noted that urban vegetation generally requires more water and shade than desert or mountain plants, which are drought-resistant. Agriculture in Saudi Arabia has transformed significantly, altering traditional diets. Foods previously unavailable locally are now produced domestically, although dates remain a staple. Saudi Arabia produces about half a million tons of dates annually, with tens of thousands of tons donated as humanitarian aid, primarily through the UN's World Food Program, WFP, and the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. A dedicated factory in Al Hassa produces dates specifically for aid, making Saudi Arabia the WFP's second largest donor. The Saudi agriculture sector has expanded with government support, providing loans, technical assistance, and access to affordable water, fuel, and duty-free imports. Since 2000, further incentives have encouraged foreign investment, and the Ministry of Agriculture oversees these initiatives with help from SIB and the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization, which stores wheat, produces animal feed, and manages flour mills nationwide. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiry signing off.